text before the family name found in the alcohol tells you how many hydroxyl groups are present in that alcohol. Here we have propan 1 ol. The second example is propan 1 2 di ol. Di meaning 2, telling us we've got two hydroxyl groups in position 1 and 2. And this third example is propan 1 2 3 tri ol, meaning that we three, have three hydroxyl groups in position 1, 2 and 3 of the alcohol. So what we have to look at is the similarities and differences between an alcohol, a diol and a triol. We can see that they have the same number of carbon atoms and the only factor that's changing is the number of hydroxyl groups. What we're going to look at is we're going to look at the properties, so therefore we have to look at the intermolecular forces that each of these have. We can see that they're all polar because they have differences in electronegativity between the oxygen and the hydrogen of the hydroxyl group. So they all contain London dispersive forces, they'll have permanent dipole, permanent dipole interactions and they'll all contain hydrogen bonds. However, what's different is the number of hydrogen bonds as they have different numbers of hydroxyl groups. If you've got one hydroxyl group, it can exhibit one hydrogen bond, two hydroxyl groups, two hydrogen bonds and three hydroxyl groups means that it can give off three hydrogen bonds. So the first uh, property we're going to look at is the melting and boiling point, which is looking at change in state of matter. So if I was to draw propan 1 ol and draw propan 1, 2, 3 triol, we know that they have hydrogen bonds. So if I was to show the propan 1 ol ha having a hydrogen bond between another propan 1 ol and I was to do the same with the propan 1, 2, 3 triol, what I can see is that the molecules are closer together in the propan 1, 2, 3 trial. And that's because each molecule can form three hydrogen bonds with another molecule. This means that there are more intermolecular forces which hold the molecules closer together. And as a result, more energy is required to break these and therefore this will have a higher boiling point than the propan 1 ol. So we're gonna have the same images, but this time we're gonna be looking at viscosity, which is the thickness of a liquid. Again, if we look at the propan 1, 2, 3 trial, each molecule can form three hydrogen bonds with another molecule. This means that there are more intermolecular forces which can hold the molecule closer together. And this means that the liquid will be thicker or more viscous. The third property we focus in on is volatility, which is the easiness to evaporate. Again, if we look at the propan 1, 2, 3 trial, each molecule could form three hydrogen bonds with another molecule. This means that there are more intermolecular forces which hold the molecules closer together. And this means it will actually be harder to break these bonds and therefore the volatility, that's the easiness to evaporate, would decrease as it's going to be harder to break the larger quantity of hydrogen bonds between the molecules. So the last property we look at is the solubility in water and this is the ability of an organic molecule to be able to dissolve in water. So if we look at propan 1 ol, remember that can only form one hydrogen bond. Water is polar and we know the phrase like dissolves like, so that will be soluble in the water. However, if we look at propan 1, 2, 3 trial, that's got three hydrogen bonds Water has two hydrogen bonds, so this is more like the water, so therefore the propan 1, 2, 3 trial will be more soluble. And this is because it has more intermolecular forces between the molecules, which hold the molecules closer together, and therefore it will be more soluble. So here is a little summary of the four properties that we have to know when we're comparing alcohols. We need to be able to identify the intermolecular force, the impact that it has on that particular property, and we need to be able to explain that clearly. So this is it summarised and you will need to know this for your exam. <laughs>past paper questions from the higher 2008 written 15a the graph shows how the freezing point changes with changing the concentration for aqueous solutions of sodium chloride and ethane or ethan 1 2 diol draw the structural formula for ethane 1 2 diol so the first thing we want to do is look at the prefix eth that tells us how many carbons to draw we can see that it is a diol which means we're going to have to have 
um, two hydroxyl groups and it's telling us one's on position one and the other is on position two. We fill the rest out with hydrogens and this is how we draw the ethane one, two dial. This past paper question is from the higher 2013 written 9a. Why is the boiling point of ethane one, two dial much higher than the boiling point of propan one all? So if we're looking at the two structures, we can see that they are both polar. They have LDFs, permanent dipole and hydrogen bonds. However, as the ethane 1,2 diol has two hydroxyl groups, that means that it can exhibit two hydrogen bonds, whereas the propan 1 ol only has one hydroxyl group, so therefore can only give off one hydrogen bond. And because ethane 1,2 diol has twice the number of hydrogen bonds, it means it requires more energy to break these into molecular forces and therefore a higher boiling point. This question is from the Higher Revised 2013 Multiple Choice 6. The structures for molecules of four liquids are shown below. Which liquid would be the most viscous? Now remember viscosity is the thickness of the liquid and that's due to the quantity of hydrogen bonding that we have. The more hydrogen bonding, which means there's going to be more intermolecular forces which will hold the molecules together, that means the substance will be more viscous. So what we have to do is we have to identify the number of hydroxyl groups in A, B, C and D. And what we can see is that D has two, hydro uh, two sets of hydrogen bonding, so therefore this will be the most viscous. This past paper question is from the Higher Revised 2015, written 3A. Sherbet is a sweet powder that fizzes on the tongue. A sherbet contains citric acid and it's given as the diagram of citric acid. Explain why citric acid is very soluble in water. So what we need to know is that water is polar and therefore it has hydrogen bonding. We want to identify the functional groups which is on the citric acid. So we have three carboxyl groups and one hydroxyl group but what we can see is there's a difference in electronegativity between the oxygen and the hydrogen found in each of those groups which means this molecule of citric acid will give off four amounts of hydrogen bonding per molecule and because it's got lots of hydrogen bonding water's got hydrogen bonding it means it's going to be extremely soluble as like dissolves like this past paper question is from the higher 2017 multiple choice 2. Which of the following compounds would be the most water soluble? So remember, water is polar. So what we're looking at is we're looking at the number of hydrogen bonds that some of them will have. A is non-polar, so it will only have London dispersal forces. B, we can see it's got one hydroxyl group. C um, doesn't have a hydroxyl group but it does have permanent dipole interactions between the carbon and the double bond O which is the carbonyl functional group and D we can see has four hydroxyl groups so we'll have four uh, hydrogen bonds exhibited by that molecule so D would be the correct answer as it's got the most hydrogen bonding. This past paper question is from the higher 2014 multiple choice 14. So benzaldehyde and vanillin are examples of flavour molecules. Vanillin is soluble in water and is fairly volatile. Which line in the table correctly compares the benzaldehyde to the vanillin? So what we have to look at um, is firstly we'll look at the uh, solubility in water. So we know that water is polar so we're looking at hydrogen bonding. What we can see is that on the vanillin, we can see that it's got a hydroxyl group, which means it's got one hydrogen bonding. Benzaldehyde does not have a hydroxyl group, so wouldn't have hydrogen bonding at all. So that means that the benzaldehyde has got less solubility in water than vanillin. So it could only be multiple choice answer C or D by looking at that one property. The second property they look at is the volatility. Remember the volatility is the easiness to evaporate and the more hydrogen bonding we've got, the least, um, the least amount of volatility it has. So because benzaldehyde has got no hydrogen bonding, that means it's going to be easier to evaporate. So therefore the correct answer to this is multiple choice answer D.